Good morning, Anna. How are you? Not gonna say much. <laughs> See that frost on the four-wheeler seat? That's a good hard killing frost. Should be a good thing for us at this point because it's gonna finish off some of the corn and soybeans that are still trying to grow and hanging in there with high moisture. And that sun will hopefully help dry those things out now that those plants are gonna be done growing. That machine right there is gonna get switched over to corn today. We've finished off the majority of our soybeans. We've got 10 acres here, 10 acres there, and little pieces that we're gonna have to go back and get. But now that those have froze off and died, it's gonna be four, five, six days probably before we send the second machine to go clean those up. In the meantime, we've got a brand new corn header coming for this thing today. You guys are gonna see that. And I don't know if we'll take any corn today. I don't know that yet. It's gonna be kind of a goofy day. We got some running around to do, some cleaning up to do, some switching over. We're gonna be working on the dryer. It's gonna be busy. It's chilly out here, dog. Uh-oh, I dropped my water bottle. We'll walk way back here in our new shed with the transparent walls to grab the tractor for the first job today. <laughs> that joystick is supposed to raise my bucket off the ground. I am baffled. I have no hydraulic function either. Uh, that's a new one. I think I'll try unplugging it and plugging it back in. Now it works. Okay. All right. Glad I didn't call customer service. Support, customer support. Remember, Anna, we need a million subs, and then you can have your ride. Maybe a hammer to go on. I got a hammer in the tractor. Oh, okay. There's one of those patches right there. Those beans need to dry down more before we can harvest them. We've got this really awkward three acre piece here. This is an awkward corner of a field over here over the hill that I actually bought towards the end of last summer. So we've never farmed this before and with these posts here we can't actually don't think we can get in here with our 40 foot wide header. So we're gonna pull one post out here. It's an old fence post probably been there for a hundred years. The previous owners had a no hunting sign on it. I don't care about it. I just want it out of the way so we can get to the field. Oh. Jeez. Dad's gonna watch this and tell me I tied the chain around the post the wrong way. And I'm gonna say, did it pull the post out? That white cap was actually on there a lot harder than it looked. It was down in the ground. So I couldn't get that out by hand. I had a feeling it might pull that out first. Oh, that's way more than 50 years old. You could put it where? In the archives. In... <laughs> you got some archives at home? You can take it. You pull that one as long as we're here. You think pull the next one too? Yeah. I guess. Because we can go way over here if we need to. Yeah. And yeah, we may as well pull the next one. These posts are old. They have been here a long, long time. Like Dad said, he's been up here for 40 years and he's never seen these fences be used. They were old when he moved here, so. Some old boy hammered these in a long time ago. That thing was in there deep, it actually pulled the, I could feel it pulling pressure on the tractor. Our next obstacle could be this old gate. And we talked to the neighbors here, he's got a new fence in there. He doesn't care about this old gate. All we gotta pull is this end, and then we could just set it and lean it against that fence, huh? Jim thinks maybe that gate's from back in the 40s. I would guess at least, Somewhere back then, 20s, 30s, 40s. I'm sure when they put these gates and these fences up, they figured some idiot with a YouTube channel would probably come by in 100 years and take video of it. That's a metal plate there. Well, we broke it off the plate. Yeah, like that's what was... Well, we didn't just break that off. Will that chain... I just run a shorter chain, I guess. If you, if you ran out of pull... Yeah, it, the tractor maxed out. Oh, yeah, I was worried about that chain right before it broke.
kind of protected too, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's 30 feet to there from this? Yeah, from that, yeah. So if I can get That's the, how wide the combine is. The tires here, the head will be... The head will still be five feet over that. The head sticks out five feet past the tires and the... Well, no, this combine's only about 25 wide. 20 feet from the middle of the combine and this is 35 to where the tire would be. Right, right this, there, a, this approach needs to be six feet wider going that direction. Okay, the pickup from the east just went by. We're waiting for two from the west yet, are they two firewall Jim? Hang on a second, I don't know what they're doing here. If they're turning or what they're doing. They just turned into firewall, so you're, well, there's another one that just turned go, just go, just go, just go, just go, just go. Just go as long as you're clear to the east. They'll catch up behind you, be fine. I'm on the road, so, yep, that's, I'll let you know when I get there. I'll turn around and follow you, man. I can go down the center of the road and stop them. Is it still clear to the east, Zach? All clear east. I am in the approach going over the post, so I think we're good. I don't want to bother him when he's trying to clear that fence with the header. I'm in the field. Still clear east, awesome. You want me to bring this back home then? Where you, what, what do you, what do you want from me? Jim, you can come by and maybe pick me up, or you're here already, huh? I'm gonna try it quick and see. Well, gee, Sana, gee, Stidge, that chain's about junk. You two could have been killed. Fine, run away then. Go ahead, follow. Come on, Ditch, follow her. Now I've got to check over a bin that we're gonna run some of these beans in this bin into back here. We've got to get the beans that are in this wet tank or this holding bin out so that we can put corn in there. This bin is full of beans now. This one we're gonna put corn in, so we're gonna put the beans in this one right here. So I'm gonna make sure that the motor's running, the belts look okay, the sweep is in the right place, which it isn't. Move the gates back and forth, make sure they slide, make sure the floor is relatively clean. It smells like a pigeon's been in here. We know this motor's on its last leg. That's an old motor. That was easier than expected. Make sure the gate's open and closed. Also easier than expected. Yeah, they're closed. Huh. Getting the sweep disengaged is proving to be a real problem because the sweep is engaged. It's running now. I need a disengage so I can put corn on top of it. And it won't. This collar's not holding tight, but it's loose on purpose. Because they're all junk. So tightening that up isn't gonna do it. I got that loose for a reason. This, this sweep has always been a problem getting it in and out. Might have to take the plate off inside there to get down into the linkage and unhook it. Never fought it for this long before. Ah! Guess I might need an impact to tighten that collar and try that. I don't know. I really don't want to take the cover off the inside. Need to grease it too as long as I'm there. I got that 30 ready to go. Okay. It was a pain getting the sweep disengaged, but uh, I got it. Still engaged? Yeah. Okay, it'll stay disengaged now. Won't we go on? Well, I'm not going to make any guarantees, but that's as good as I'm going to get it. Okay. The only thing I haven't done is open the auger up top and close it to the 20. Okay, does that one go with the crank? I think so, yeah. The second bin is shut. Should be, yes. So all we actually have to do is shut the first one. And open the third. You know, yeah, yep. I've got to let Jackson know how much fertilizer to bring. Okay. So our total with Laxton's there 
and and Hagen's is 113 plus 48. Yeah. 161 acres. Yep. Times 185 pounds of of DAP. So we need. 185 pounds. Is that what you're putting on? Total product, right? Because 185 times. Yeah, that's 46% um, yeah. is 85 pounds. Yep, yeah, that's that'd be right, yep. Yeah. So then 161 acres times 125 pounds of K is 20,125. So we need 15 ton of P and 10 ton of K. Yeah, but total. you already have some. Yeah, but I already put down two and three ton. So mm -hmm. I need 12 and eight more tons. Did you empty the potash last night? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can see five pounds of it down in there, but it's yeah. empty. We got Six ton of potash and nine ton of dap coming. That fertilizer coming will keep the strip tiller going. Once that shows up here, we're gonna start transferring some beans here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and switch combine in the shop over to corn while dad goes and picks up that new corn header. So I think you said it was one ring down and then we put one more load in here? Yeah. It's probably fairly full, isn't it? You want me to go ahead and check it? I don't think we need to. It's probably half a ring down. Probably is. We got more room, but it's got to go it's... some in there anyway. Yeah, did you check the unload order in there? Yeah, four out, it's shot. Okay. It's going to unload really slow. We might want to crack from the outside too. Oh, just okay. Just because the plating is so shot. It is. That whole thing on the last night. I grease the motor, but it sounds like hell, like a bearing is out. So we might end up putting On the motor. outside motor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't sound good. And we can put plating in there. Um, when it's full? When it's full. It's not as easy because it's just harder to line up. Right. It's down that far? Yeah. But it's peaked up. Yeah, it's peaked up now. We got, I don't know, we got some. Oh, I think we got one full load and half load. Sure. If our calculations are correct, there should be soybeans coming through here any second. We sure hope our calculations are correct. Come on. There, I hear it. There we go. Okay, we got a few hundred bushels or a thousand bushels transferred in there. I'm gonna let the dust settle for here for a, for a, I'm gonna let the dust settle for a minute in there before I climb in. And then I'm gonna take some samples and test the moisture on it just to make sure we're good. Multiple samples say that we're good, so we continue to transfer. Dad took off to go help Jim with something quick, and then he's going to pick up the new corn header, so that leaves me here with this thing. My job is to, I'm going to need both hands to get this open. My job is to switch this beast over to corn. Probably should throw a bunch of grease on the 50 hour Zerks. And we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, something just happened. There was a power surge, and it got quiet. The lights flickered in the shop, and everything shut off out here. Well, at least it's shut off. I don't see things overflowing. That's weird. Everything starts. That is really weird, we've never had that happen before. Everything started right back up, and it's transferring now. We had three bin fans running, and two of them kept going, one of them quit. Huh, some sort of a weird power surge. Well, back to work, I guess. Shift rotor. If I can. I guess I can't get that by hand right now. I didn't show you my struggles, but we're gonna we're gonna deal with that later. God, I need two hands for everything. I really need a production crew 
then maybe even two hands isn't enough. I'm struggling. Push in for corn. There we go. I bet there's a grease here. Leave that open. got that mostly switched over but I'm still working on greasing it but dad just showed up with this header and I want to check the uh, moisture in these beans again there it is she's a beaut this is a brand new deer C12 F Stockmaster this is their newest latest and greatest folding 12 row header we should not have to mess with taking this thing on and off a trailer now because it folds up to 20 feet wide, which is actually more narrow than the combine. So once we bolt this thing onto the machine for the year, get it all set, it should be able to stay on there all year long. So anyway, that'll go on today. That's neat. Well, it sure is. I'm pretty excited about it. Oh. All right, Dig, I think we're ready. You can't get up that ladder or I'd take you with me. Let's go fire it up. Maybe put the combine head on the uh, combine head, the, the, the corn header, all that dust. It's so quiet in here. Suppose we drop the snouts now? Drop the snouts and hook it up, I suppose? Take a visual, make sure I don't see any wrenches or any kind of tools or anything in there. Because I am going to fire this puppy up. I ran a bunch of calibrations. I did not put any of that on video because it doesn't make spectacularly entertaining video. So now I'm going to wheel it out to the field here and fire it up. Hoppers are open. Idle down. Settings are set. I'm going to fire up the back. Definitely seems to be moving. Everything checks out good. Now I really want to just go out and start taking some corn. We got some across the road here, but back here we're just not quite ready yet. But the only thing with the head is I don't actually remember how to fold it. Like in here, what what control is it? I don't I don't remember how to do it. Onyx has apparently decided that he just keeps his skid loader down here now where he's working on his tracks. So he's got his inner line and his outer line, his berms for making the corners. He's got a tabletop there, a bunch of whoops through here, and a whole bunch more jumps back there. Which is cool. I like that he does that instead of playing video games, but Onyx, you got to bring the skid steer back to the yard, bud. The excavators are going to be coming out here in the next couple of days, bringing in a lot of fill and getting that pad completely ready because hopefully we we got some construction going on here in a couple of weeks we got a few spots with some thick weeds that grew through in areas where we couldn't plant this spring so the plan the idea is hopefully the 8295 here will run the mendaco at a shallow depth to kind of chew some of those weeds up we're gonna need the control box for this thing oh is that another 9570 isn't it yeah that's in the tractor jim's running it's the bracket itself is it, the, is it that black bracket that gets clamped onto the frame? Jim's got a problem the way it sounds now, so we may have to run down there anyway, so then we could grab that control box for the Mendeco. I'm quite confident I know what he needs. I'm also quite confident that we don't have one. Jim called. He's got a, the, the, I think it's the cast piece that holds one of the shanks on that's broke. I should have him send a picture. I know we don't have one. But if he sends a picture, maybe Glenwood would have one. We could run their trailer back and grab that. We might have one. And then we can get that control box, too. Yeah, have them send a picture. Okay. Dad's going to run and get the parts, and Jim's going to bring the tractor home, and we're going to fix it right here because it might be tougher than it sounds like, according to Jim. So a lot of shenanigans today, back and forth. I feel like I just keep zigzagging and walking around the yard here. I kind of expected it to be that way because it's an in-between day where we're mostly done with 
with soybeans and we haven't started corn yet and we got to get the dryer all ready and we wanted to get tillage going and the weather's awesome so it's a good day for it these are the last of our beans here we still had a couple trucks full to run in I was wondering when you were gonna get up. <laughs> that gets your attention? <laughs> well, there it is. <sighs> yep, that's broken. What did you do? We just got that 10, 12 years ago. This is this piece, right? It is that piece, yep. That's not looking very good. Smoke wrench. We spray any of that gunk bee in there? Somebody told me it was heat to make it work. And when we went to tech school we had blocks of wax. We put wax on the hot metal and it every time it worked. Every single time. The opposite? What a mess. We'll be going again soon, I guess. Oh, you bastard. Am I gonna go, go in there? Oh, the paint. Hey, where were you? Hey, you could have helped with all that. Come here, I'm gonna use you as a rag. I'll wipe my hands on you. There, we'll get you, get wipe my hands right there for you. Won't listen? That's a male cat though. I don't care. Anna, what do you have? What did you kill? Oh, you killed a flamingo. Time to put some diesel in the big horse so Jim can go back to work and cut the controller out of this thing so we can run the Mendeco on the other tractor. You can see I rigged this up by myself. Actually came up with this mounting system all on my own. He's finally out of here and back to work. We have made a managerial decision to not take the combine out and try it for the first time with a new head in corn for the first time of the year as it's getting dark. So. We're gonna do that tomorrow. We're gonna break into some corn. We're gonna get that bean bin empty. I think some of the sumps are plugged. We had some pods in our first couple of tanks when we were first setting the combines and going through some green stuff and it's running really slow. So I'm gonna stay in the yard and watch that. Tomorrow we'll get the combine going. We'll have to clean the floor in that bin. We'll get the Mendeco going. I'll have the strip tiller going. Next video there's gonna be a lot going on. A lot less in the yard hopefully and more so out in the field. Thanks for watching. Keep it between the rows. Hey, you know what? I haven't hit a million subscribers yet, and that makes Anna very upset because she gets the tractor ride once I hit that. So would you see to it that we hit a million subscribers here real soon? I didn't even have to break into my lunchbox today. Meow. Oh, that one scared me. I didn't mean to disturb you.